Well, I wanted to bring you into the uh, studio. Um, you know, you and I, well, I've gotten to know you over the uh, past few months out at a park and rec because you run the security out there. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten to know you, some of your guys. And, um, uh, but when this shooting went down at that teen party last week, I was like, oh man, you have to come on and talk about it. But you had trepidation. You're like, no, 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 I, I don't want to come on and talk about that because it's an ongoing investigation. I don't have any details. Yeah, for me, uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I don't know too much about it. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it most likely is an ongoing investigation. So I'd rather not uh, comment nope. on it. I, and that's exactly what you, so. And that's what I was saying to you. I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't need you to comment on that. Right. Uh, but I think it's very fascinating. I would love for you to come in the studio and just talk about uh, security in general. Because uh, security... Um, not forces, security force, security detail, security, what do you call it? Right, right. Personnel? Yeah, right. Um, <coughs> well, let's talk about a little bit about uh, my background is uh, in my former life, I was a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. Uh, before that, I was with the uh, Department of Justice. So uh, as an investigator, uh, I attended uh, the Federal Law Enforcement Academy on several occasions in uh, Glencoe, Georgia, for uh, my training. And um, so, like I said, this was a former life. Seems like former life ago. Not a, uh, not a, it might seem like a former you know, life, but it's not. But uh, so I always had the interest of uh, starting my own business and bringing my talents forth uh, in the security industry. And uh, I opened up my own security firm in 2014, Trust But Verify uh, Screening and Security, uh, located in, in Clearwater, Florida. And what we do, we provide uh, security guards, uh, security consultation, uh, cameras, uh, camera installments, uh, installations, and things of that sort. Um, that being said, you know, I, I look at uh, what's going on with the active shooters, uh, now, uh, you'll hear of them. Uh, we just had one uh, back in Vegas, uh, unfortunately. Um, but that's, that's what you and your company, uh, to a degree, train for. Because you're not just, you, yes, you have guys posted up at some of right. the uh, bars here in town. Right. But you, your specialty is in large events, is covering large events and making sure stuff like that doesn't happen. Well, that is correct. Now, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, you know, being a former law enforcement and uh, the law enforcement guys, they train for these instances, these active shooter instances every day. Train, train, train over and over and over again. And um, as far as the security industry, that's, that's very important. Like in the state of Florida, you have to be a class D security guard. So you have to obtain a 40 hour uh, class room setting, which uh, you'll obtain a certificate, which you present to the state and uh, go through the, they uh, take fingerprints and they uh, then issue you a class D security. And that 40 uh, hours, is there scenario training as well? You know, they go over... Uh, is yes, it mostly classroom it, stuff? It is. It's all classroom. And then they have what they have, uh, a class G, which is your uh, armed certificate, which is an additional 24-hour course where they take you out and in, in on the range, and you have to qualify at a certain score. And then every year... To maintain that Class G, you have to take a four-hour refresher course, uh, which you have to submit through the state uh, of Florida. So um, what we try to do is, it, for my agency in a way, I take that a step above, and, and I put my, my guys through additional training on verbal judo, de-escalation tactics, uh, and when you say verbal, because well, both of those go together, verbal judo and right. de-escalation tactics are one and the same, because the verbal judo, I'm assuming anyways, what you're talking about, are those, you're, 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 you're bringing down, yeah, de-escalating the situation right. By, right. by using conversation instead of that is correct. force. That is correct. If we can de-escalate a situation uh, utilizing verbal judo tactics, 90% uh, of the time you can uh, de-escalate 
whatever situation you're in. Um, in today's world, uh, unfortunately, it is very important to for establishments to be proactive on security, and that is part of my uh, my responsibility to my clients is actually going in there and instructing them on the importance of security and going over. Uh, when you when you're talking about establishments, do you mean bars and clubs or anybody like you know, a place and, like this? Bars and clubs, a place like this. Uh, you know, homeowners associations. Uh, oh, you know, anything of that sort. Uh, taking a proactive approach to security because I'll tell you, a lot of people, uh, you know, especially business owners, they put security on the side and they think, you know, I, I can't afford it. You know, I don't want to put the money over on that right now. Take and your chances. It, until something happens, right. until something occurs, right? So, you know, we go into the approach not only as you know, places security guards, trained security guards on site, but taking a proactive approach to security and training the, uh, and educating the um, client upon that as well. Well, let's talk about the security guards. Again, we're not making any uh, assessments or judgments on what happened at that nightclub on uh, New Year's Eve, the mm -hmm. teen pajama party. Right. Uh, but one of the things that I did want to talk to you about is one of the security guards is 18, is only 18 years old, and these are armed security guards. Now, listen, I, I would really like to make a point to say I, I don't know how this stuff went down, and that guy, that 18-year-old, I want to say kid. I want to say that kid, but that 18-year-old may have done every single thing right. I just, and, you know, he might have been raised with guns, you know, since he was five years old. I don't know. Uh, but for, for uh would you would you want an 18 year old in your ranks i don't hire anybody uh under the age of 21. okay and uh the reason why i don't do that is uh usually uh, you know 18 year olds uh they're getting out of high school they're trying to figure out what they want uh, and you know usually uh 21 years and up they have some kind of education uh, they've obtained some kind of college or training of some sort. Uh, maybe they're uh, National Guard, reserves, or just getting out of the uh, military, uh, which is very helpful as well. Um, and experience, uh, lifetime experience. So that's why I, I try to hire my, I do hire my folks uh, 21 years and up. Um, Couple things, uh, you know, being in a uh, shoot or don't shoot situation, uh, you cannot judge any situation because they're all different. You don't know what happened. You're not, you weren't there, you know. Um, Do you think this era of body cams have helped or hurt? No, absolutely, I think they've helped. Okay. Absolutely. Because sometimes we get that just a one little clip, and you know, from the novice, the, the the person from the outside looking in, you know, we see uh, you see some things, and you go, well, this is obvious. This is obvious, you know, that uh, the the cop was wrong, da 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 da, or 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 whatever. You you feel you think you know what went down by watching five seconds worth of video. Right. Well, you know, body cams actually do help. Um, you know, you have that footage, and usually. Uh, you know, uh, when you have someone saying something that occurred, because we all see things differently. We right. all perceive stuff as being different. So, you know, when you have something on video, it, it's uh, hard to right. dispute, dispute that, you know. Uh, so I, I'm all for that. Well, let's talk about, let's go back to your past life, as you were saying. Yeah. And let's talk about what happened here April 3rd, 2009. Well, 2009 was interesting. Uh, I was sitting, uh, I thought it was going to be an easy day, to be honest with you. Okay, we had just settled in um, for the morning, and we got a call that there had been a shooter. That uh, actually, what happened is the guy went in, he barricaded his car in front of the front entrance of uh, the Civic Center in Binghamton, New York. Uh, it was English as a second language. Um, that was being taught in there so uh people from all around the world to, uh studying english 
Um, and he went in and shot. Is that, what did, is, was that his motive? Was he going after foreigners? Well, he was a foreigner himself. Okay. You know, uh, we never know what sets these guys off. And uh, what set this guy off, we have no idea. Uh, he went in, uh, shot the lady uh, behind the, uh, the uh, behind the counter, uh, the greeter. She had been there for several, several years, uh, shot her, and uh, shot 13 people, <coughs> ranging from 16 uh, years of age up to uh, 60 years of age. So when we go into a situation like that, we never know. Uh, is the guy in the building? Is he taking hostages? What is going on? Was that, that your situation? first? Was that your first active shooter shooter situation that yes, you? Would, yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, it was. I, can, yes, I can't. I can't imagine what was going through your heart, through your chest, as you're coming up on the scene. Or is there a stone cold calmness that is uh, overcoming you? Well, I think training, training, training. It kicks in. You know, all those years of training, training. Uh, you go down and, you know, you have every agency there is down there, local, state, federal, and we're all working together as a team to go in there and assess the situation and to save lives. Um, so, you know, when we go into a situation like that, training is very important. And with this individual, that's the thing, Chris, when you're going in, you never know why these people do it. They just, you know, something sets them off. Um, that's why it's so important to take a proactive approach to security, okay? When right. someone comes into this facility, where are you gonna go? Uh, you know, uh, who's gonna do what? Who's gonna call 911? Uh, what's your exits look like? Um, those types of things. Do you, do you think the reason that uh, business owners uh, so often don't uh, uh, Pay attention to stuff like that is because it just it'll send this shockwave of fear through, or you're you're worried that it's going to send a shockwave of fear throughout the company like hey uh nothing's going on but i just want to send you get you know put you guys through some uh some training so if stuff ever does go down well i think so i think that's part of it and i think the normal business owner is just so overcome with their day-to-day -day operations you know of bringing in generating income and, and building the business that they don't think of those things either. They just don't. And, and you think it's because it's such low probability too. That's right. That I'll just take my chances if I just have if if it's my office that happens to be the one that makes the news, then that's just exactly dumb luck. exactly. And, right. and that's the issue. Yeah. In these days, uh, how how many churches are calling you these days to go? Hey, we want you to come by and run these scenario drills with us. Well, you know what? I uh, I actually give back. I do a lot of pro bono stuff for a lot of local churches. And what we're doing is we actually train volunteers within the church. So what the pastor will do, system pastor, he will or she will uh, select certain individuals from their church, and I will meet with them, and we will train them on how to uh, put together a proactive security team. And what we usually do is they will be plain clothes, okay? We talk about... Uh, vigilance and what to look for and we bring them through the ones that have their concealed weapons permits uh, we bring them through firearms training we put them through a firearms uh, training course and then we put them through a simulator where shoot or don't shoot situations so we actually train these volunteers within the church and I do it like I said for pro bono reasons uh, to give back my talents and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, receiving about two calls a week want me to go in and do these uh, trainings. Uh, usually it will take uh, several months to get a team up and going. And um, you know, uh, these teams save lives, they do. <clears throat> um, another uh, in the studio today, by the way, uh, former special agent. Uh, for Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security Investigations, and um, your duties included uh, investigating money laundering, commercial fraud, narcotic smuggling, work site enforcement, child porn, covert and overt, cyber investigations, illegal trade of weapons, uh, munitions, 
and intellectual property property rights investigations. That is that is running the gamut right there. That's running the gamut. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from, sir. From uh, money laundering to property rights. Yes, invest- sir. <laughs> it, it, it was a uh, it was a fun career. A uh, never born moment. Uh, met a lot of great people. Had a lot of fun doing it. But uh, now being a business owner and giving back my being able to take my talents to educate the security industry, it's very rewarding. I love what I do now. It's All right, great. so you you came from law enforcement, and now uh, you know you go. Like I said, I met uh, I met Sean over at a Park and Rack on Wednesday nights when I'm there doing. <clears throat> Uh, at karaoke uh, Wednesday nights, eight to midnight. Make sure you join me at Park and Rec every single Wednesday night, eight to midnight, uh, for a karaoke. But that's where I first, uh, you know, ran into Sean. <laughs> and, and actually, Chris sings, and he's a pretty good singer. Right, right. If right. you haven't heard him, get yeah. out and see him. Uh, unfortunately, too many people have heard me. And they, they know that you're <laughs> you are a, good. You know, you're just uh, being nice. Um, how do you make that transition from, uh, you know, it was 14 years in law enforcement into the private sector? Yeah, I because actually, I, I was uh, a little more than that. I was uh, actually 15 years federal law enforcement. And uh, before that, I was a police officer for a year. And, but, yeah. I, I've been at Park and Rec long enough to know that they brought you guys in. Yeah, they, they like so many other uh, groups out there. So many other bars out there would have their own employees. They would employ right. their security guards. Right. But that was not where they. That was not working out for them. They realized. It. Plus, Park and Rec in that whole corner there. For those of you that haven't been down down in that area in a while, uh, in uh, downtown St. Pete, is that whole corner now is hopping. Oh, it's, it's booming. Yeah, and it's booming. like a New Year's Eve, I th- want to say they had like six thousand or three thousand people on that block or something like that. Just it, that corner. It was it was fun. It was yeah, crazy. I'm it, sure. It, crazy busy, and uh, you know, I I love working down Park and Rec. Uh, the, you know, the staff members, uh, the owners, the the owner, the great people. And what a what a great experience to work in there with those people. They they are it, it's a lot of fun. But once you decided to make that switch from uh, law enforcement into the private sector, start the security company, I would imagine as you started to wander around, wander around and go into these places to go. All right, let me let me assess, you know, their risks here. You are probably just floored. Like you know, from your vantage, your your Jason Bourne vantage point. You probably walk into a place and go, "Oh my gosh, there's a half a there's a I see a dozen ways right now that somebody could uh, uh, breach this." You know the, the I'm, I'm trying to throw out terminology. You're, 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 you're <laughs> absolutely no, you're absolutely right. When when I go into a situation, I'm I'm doing a what we call a threat assessment, where I go in, I look at vulnerabilities within your facility or within your business, and say, you know what, we need to work at that. We need, you know. Let's put a camera here. Let's put an access control here. Uh, you know, and really educate why we have to do this, why it's, why it is important to do this. Now, uh, what makes us different as a security company is uh, my guys are licensed security guards. Uh, we're fully insured, okay? And I am a uh, uh, fully licensed firm through the state of Florida. So in going in to a business owner, um, I really take that liability as a business and and say, well, listen, you're hiring my company, okay? You're hiring a licensed company to come in here. This is what we do. And we come in and we take that proactive approach versus having someone off the street that you hire that's not fully, that's not trained, uh, that doesn't uh, maintain a sense of proactive security measures that need to be uh, that need to uh, be approached or maintained. So um, that's what makes us different. Let's go back to uh, Mandalay Bay. Okay. Uh, in that event, yeah. There, when when you saw what was going through your head once you saw when you saw that go down, um, because I would assume there is nothing anybody. In any capacity, could have done, unless there, there. Well, there's nothing that anybody could have done, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's not one of those situations where you look and go, "Oh my gosh, this is where they messed up A, B, and C." It's one of yeah. those where you look and go, uh, "There's." Yeah, you know, I'm not going to comment on any of that because I, you know, 
I wasn't there. Okay. And so when you're not there and you're not put in that situation, um, as a professional, I've learned a long time ago, if you're not there, especially if there's an active investigation going on from the local law enforcement, uh, you know, it's it's easy to point fingers or judge. So I, I, I stray away from my comments until all the facts are out there. I understand that. Yeah. I, what do you think about, uh, let's talk about the, uh, you, you said you don't know the motivation, you know, what sets these people off. <clears throat> but in my, my mind's eye, when I see something like that, um, and I could comp- be completely wrong in this, I bet if we were to put ourselves inside those people's brains during those moments, that they would be exacting on the world in front of them what's going on in their ho- own head, like the the slaughter there at Mandalay Bay or mm-hmm. the uh, the the shootout, the shooting here. If you were to get it, walk a mile in their shoes, that that confusion and fear and anger and everything else that is happening and f- as the shooting is taking place is what's going on in this person's head day in and day out. Well, well you figure this right. Their whole motive these people is mass casualties okay when they do this all right they come in and they just want to it's mass carnage that's what they want but so, do, do they usually do, do they yeah. want that to lead to an end like i'm i'm causing all this carnage because i want you to rectify this ill in the world you never know yeah. i mean each person who knows what sets these psychos off really and that's what they are Right. right. And, and I, it, I mean, they're they're psychotic. Uh, they have some uh, mental something is just not right. So for us to try to even have a um, a rational conversation about their thought process is is ridiculous because they're not thinking like the rest of us. They don't. They're whatever's gone wrong in their head. Their right. their their wires have crossed. And so as we're trying to sit here and come up with a rational explanation the answer usually is irrational i would imagine that's it and chris that's what makes these people so dangerous right because their whole scope or their whole focus is to go in and cause mass carnage uh mass casualties so it's very important that uh for business owners taking a proactive approach in security security training talking about uh, having some kind of plan set up for an active shooter training evacuation okay uh where are my employees going to evacuate to where am i going to who's going to call 911 if possible if if you can at that time if you cannot get out of the building what do you do where do you go and this is uh this is what i do with uh my clients, I will go this part of the program. I'll go over an active shooter course with them. I'll go over training with them. We'll look at certain areas. Okay, well, if you can't get out of the building, this is where you should go. This is a safe spot to go. You know. Um, I got a question about uh, the average uh, gun uh, carrier because you sure. know we'll get in conversations. That plenty of conversations over the years on uh, various radio shows. And uh, and when you get into, uh, you know, gun rights and this and that, you will inevitably have somebody that hops on the phone and you, you go to you go to them and they are um, they'll te- they'll say something to the effect of, well, you know, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the guy that saves you, you know, you non caring, you know, you know, person, I'll be the person that saves you in the end. And then I'll ask them what they're training. How often do they train? No, so they they might say I go to the range every month or this and this and this, but in the but really that is not enough. If you're somebody that thinks that you're going to be able to take somebody down in one of these active uh, shooter situations, it is more than just going to the range, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at an active shooter situation. For example, uh, a CWP holder, concealed weapons permit holder. Uh, if you don't go to the range and shoot, you know how are you going to get that weapon out? of your side okay are you going to drop it coming out because you don't train with it every day or is it uh you know are you going to be able to hit that target with moving people hundreds of people leaving or (coughs) departing an area in mass chaos how how are you going to do that these types of things 
need to be addressed. The education is key. So um, I just put that out to my CWPs, uh, concealed weapon permit holders, is get out and train. Take a training, take an advanced training course. Go out to the range and, uh, you know, often and, and shoot. And uh, because it's a lot of responsibility. Think about it. Because yeah. oh, there's, yeah. there's one, there's always going to be one weapon, right? Always. It's going to be yours. Whatever situation you're in, remember, you, you, there's, there's a weapon involved because you're carrying a weapon. Right. A lot of people don't think that, right? And uh, an interesting story to bring up, too, when we are talking about stuff like this is uh, uh, the Dallas shooting where the guy stayed at the end of the parade. This is uh, Black Lives Matter, a peaceful protest. Then at the end of the parade, this guy just starts picking off police officers. Right. Now, was uh, he former military? I he, think was. he was. Right? He was former yeah. military. And that, that's tough because these guys are trained. Yeah. Oh, he knew right? exactly right. Oh, he knew yeah. exactly what he was doing. Um, but in the in the immediate aftermath of that, there was somebody in the parade that was legally carrying, I think, an mm-hmm. AR-15 or you know one of those style <laughs> weapons on him. And but in that situation, he could not uh, pull that weapon and 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 and, right. and help the guy because now all the cops, all the police officers are responding and they don't know who that guy is with a weapon so he's on the ground with his weapon you know uh he's spread out on the ground while his weapon is kicked away even though he was legally carrying uh he was not the uh the assailant in this and so on and so forth well that's it you got to keep that in mind uh when law enforcement uh shows up that they don't know who you are all they see is you carrying a weapon or you dropped a weapon or whatever they don't know who you are. No. So you have to, you know, hands up. Is there a up. protocol in that? I guess the protocol is just hands up oh, and hand, do what you're told. Hands up and do what you're told. So there's not, it, you can't flash them yeah, a badge yeah, yourself yeah, and go. Yeah, <laughs> it, that ain't going to work. You know, hands up and do what you're told. I've it's got it. 100 hours of, of yeah. active shooter training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, sir, get out your ass on the ground. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Sean, thank you so much for uh, coming by today. I really appreciate it. Well, Chris, thanks for having me, man. It's always nice to see you. Uh, getting over here, what time is it? 8.30, uh, 8 o'clock. It wasn't bad coming over, actually. Because you're in the so. Pinellas side of things. Right? I am, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. Traffic was pretty good today. So. Uh, trust but verify screening and security. They're on the McMullen Booth Road in Clearwater. You can get a hold of them at 844-938-7878. 844-938-7878. Four four nine three eight seven eight seven eight. Once again, trust but verify screening and security. Uh, have a great day. Oh, and by, I guess uh, I was going to ask you uh, what what piece of advice you have for me if uh, something were ever to go down here in the studio. But I I have a feeling I'm screwed. I'm, well, I'm, I'm in the back 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 corner of this building, this facility. Well, Chris, I, I I'll talk to you afterwards. I'll yeah. give you some pointers. Well, the little does the people know, and I don't want to tell them where you know because you know for obvious security reasons. Right. I have a fireman's pole somewhere here around here where if we're and there's a false wall i just i just kick out the wall and go down the fireman's pull and out the back i go there you go Beautiful. <laughs> hey uh, thanks chris thank you once again sean have a great day yeah. uh,